Loughton Station. Not only one of the finest designed tube stations on the network, but also a great portal to adventure. That's where we're going, up there, into the forest. So it's, uh, it's quite a short walk from Loughton Station up to Epping Forest. And that's where we're going today, deep into Epping Forest. I realised that I haven't made an Epping Forest video for a year and a half, last spring, spring 2021, on a very wet day. And I need to make at least one a year. Actually, what I used to want to make is one for each season of the year. I have, well, like I said, I haven't done one. <laughs> I haven't done one for 18 months. So we got, I think this is probably, we could technically call this the, the end of autumn because it's been very warm and it's a beautiful day today. And although I've made quite a few Epping Forest videos, firstly, there's quite a, quite a few new people on the channel since my last Epping Forest video. So this may be the first foray into Epping Forest for some of you. And also I'm keen to try and cover all of the forests in a video. And there's a big chunk that I've never covered in the video. Honey Lane Plain, Honey Lane Quarters, Honey Lane Plain. And I did say I would do it, I don't know, I think it's 2019, and I've never done it. Although it's a relatively, it's not a huge area, but it's a great area. I've been there on walks, just didn't take the camera. So today we're gonna go for a stroll to Honey Lane Plain. Yes, I'm not sure on the route there yet. Well, I've got an idea in my head, but we'll see as we go, eh? And here's the beautiful little Loughton Brook leaving Epping Forest, about to head down through the streets of uh, Loughton to make its confluence with the River Roding. That is a, a walk that I've done, uh, following it from here back to the source. Great, that was a great walk. I'll link to it below, obviously. So here we go into the forest. The spirits of the forest await us. And of course, I have my copy of Edward North Buxton's essential Epping Forest Guide. Buxton was integral to the preservation of Epping Forest, a member of the incredibly influential Buxton family, and was the first verderer of Epping Forest. And this, you see it says here, look, Edward North Buxton, verderer of Epping Forest. And it appears to be an 1885 edition. It was published in 1884, so I'm not sure if this is the first edition, but it's certainly a very early edition. I do have a 1901, or is it, or a 1911 edition, so this is a real gem. But it's a really beautiful book, and it's got fantastic maps in it. And this is where we're going today. And we are currently, where are we? Loughton Camp. We're down here, and we're going to walk across and go to Honey Lane Plain. And this path here is a great way to navigate your way through the forest. It will lead you all the way from uh, Chingford all the way through to Epping. During the lockdowns of 2020 particularly, suddenly a whole load of people discovered Epping Forest. And <laughs> it was full of people. Now it's kind of returned to normal. It's about one o'clock on a Sunday. It's a beautiful clear day. Um, it's a little bit muddy underfoot, but it's a perfect day for a, for a walk in Epping Forest. And I can see two people up ahead. One person just passed me there. And this is the main path through the forest. In 2020, <laughs> this was full of people. There were people everywhere, kids running around in the trees. It was actually really lovely to see. I think the additional traffic coming to the forest wasn't great, but the number of people walking here was fantastic. And people discovered that London has a forest. London has a forest, Epping Forest preserved for the people, partly by Edward North Buxton. There was obviously a collaboration. Lots of people were involved in that. And I will uh, put the name of a book up here recently called The People's Forest. It was declared the People's Forest by Queen Victoria in 1884. And otherwise a lot of it would have gone by now. It was being nibbled away by development. 
So it's a real treasure. If you haven't been out here, and I know a lot of people haven't been out here because uh, I've brought groups of friends out here who live in Hackney and Clapton, very close to the forest. It's right on your doorstep. It's a real beautiful space. Get yourself out to Epping Forest, no matter what the weather is. You've got beautiful beech trees here. There's oak and hornbeam and others <laughs> that I can't remember off the top of my head and people will list below. It's uh, a glorious space, obviously, where you get beech trees, you get holly as well. In the spirit of an adventure, I'm going to take a slightly different route to Loughton Camp. I usually drop into the bottom of the gully there with the streamers running through. I'm going to cut up through here. Sometimes, though, when I decide to do this, it goes badly wrong. But uh, that's all part of the spirit of it, isn't it? thing we need to look out for are, is, I should say, I was going to say are, the thing we need to look out for is evidence of lopping, the particularity of Epping Forest. Commoners had rights to gather wood, but they did, don't, did, but they did so by lopping the branches at a certain height, and it made them grow in a particular fashion, so you can spot trees which were lopped. I think lopping stopped when this became the People's Forest, when the Corporation of London took it over and the commoners had their rights transferred to other things. Lopping Hall in Loughton is one of the things they got in return for their commoners' rights, or their lopping rights, I should say. Um, so all, St Martin's Eve has just passed, by the way, and that was the night when people would come out here and gather wood and drag it back to town, and there'd be much frivolity, there'd be singing and drinking, they'd bite, like bonfires here, it would be a real kind of celebration. In the forest, and that was the 11th of November, which was just uh, a week ago. And the reason I wanted to uh, approach from this angle is to get a greater idea, really, of the scale of Loughton Camp, which sits on the hill in front of us, although it's quite difficult to see it as a hill from this angle, isn't it? Because the trees. And Loughton Camp is a majestic Iron Age earthwork. Buxton simply calls it an ancient British camp, and it's one of two in Epping Forest, the other being Amesbury Banks. Wonderful, magnificent, powerful locations. That's where we're going, by the way. But first, we have to cross this little stream here. It's a delightful little brook. <laughs> sound of a babbling brook must be one of the most delightful sounds there is, isn't it? It's so, I could stay here all day just listening to the water kind of trickle over those stones there. And this is quite a steep ascent up to Loughton Camp here. Oh, but it's beautiful. The colours of the leaves are just stunning, aren't they? I think we've got some great examples of lopping here. Straight ahead, I love uh, Rachel Lilly's uh, description of lop trees like a, like a clenched fist. Rachel did a fantastic project in the forest. Another great forest artist is Ellie Wilson, who was artist in residence here and created a beautiful sequence of music. this glorious carpet of bronzed leaves here beneath the trees. Isn't it glorious? So here it is, rising on the crest of this hill in the forest, Loughton Camp, an Iron Age earthwork. I don't think it's really known for sure why it was built. There's been a lot of conjecture over the years. I think initially they thought of it as a hill fort, as a defensive enclosure. At various times it's been thought of that it could be like an animal stockade. Again, possibly for use in times of conflict, or it could have just been a, a gathering spot. But it's a, it's a majestic location. And to think it's been here for something like 3,000 years is quite astonishing, really. One of the great legends of Epping Forest and of Loughton Camp is that the famous highwayman Dick Turpin 
had a hideout here, buried in the, in the outer banks. Entirely plausible. There's just a, such an incredible view from the, the top of this outer bank, looking down into that gully that we just walked up. You have to imagine as well that the outer bank would most likely have been topped with a palisade. And obviously over the years it has eroded down, so this is probably a fraction of the height that it once was. I love it here so much, this is one of my favourite places in the world. I'll um, link below to some other videos I've made about uh, Loughton Camp and Amesbury Banks. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's been a site of fascination for me for a number of years. So in terms of following the walk, we're just going to walk uh, north, I think. <laughs> yeah, north through um, Loughton Camp, and then we're going to follow the path around. It brings us to the road, cross the road, and then head towards Honey Lane Quarters and Honey Lane Plain. This is a great walk by the way and you, there's so many ways you can extend it or shorten it if you like there's food along the way if you want food this is a good one for all the family <laughs> a good introductory walk to Epping Forest this is the path that we follow around the west bank of Loughton Camp and just follow this path around till you get to the road and the path branches off to the left, away from the camp, through these uh, holly bushes here. I love the, I love the changing landscapes of Epping Forest. As we get up to the top here, we've got this bit of kind of heathland with, with bracken and ferns and open spaces between the trees. It's really delightful. This is um, an unpleasant road to cross. Cars tend to drive along here quite fast, so you have to be very careful, but we're gonna cross over and there's a gate on the other side. And then we just follow this path here in the direction of Epping Forest Visitor Centre. We're not going to the visitor centre today, but it's a good place to stop off at if you want. You know, information about the forest, you can buy the Corporation of London's brilliant map of Epping Forest. It's often art exhibitions in there, it's great. I, uh, I actually couldn't resist going into the, to the visitor centre and I bought these, look, these delightful cards. Aren't they wonderful? Just near the visitor centre at High Beach, you've got the King's Oak pub here, a good place to stop off. On a, on a winter, well, winter, summer, any, basically any Epping Forest walk, you can stop for refreshments there. And look, next to it, there's the little kind of, uh, well, it says a cafe, it's like, got some tables there. It's like a food stand. You can get a good, you can get a good bacon roll there, good sausage bat, that kind of thing. Hearty food, walking food. You'll see I've swapped my, <laughs> my cap for a beanie. The temperature's dropped, it's about half two now. We're up higher, a bit more exposed, and suddenly it's a little bit chillier. Um, now you might be saying, look, why aren't you showing me the view behind? There's a great view there on the other side of the car park. I'm not going to show you that view because I'm going to show you a better view. Oh, I hope I do now. I've set myself up for it. But if I don't, well, then so be it. But there is a better view along here. And there's another little refreshment cabin over there as well. So plenty of places to get refreshments up here at High Beach. Buxton marks this whole area here as Honey Lane Quarters. And we're working our way towards Honey Lane Plain, not far up ahead. Now we go along Verderer's Ride, just across uh, Clay Pit Hill. And all these gates have numbers and names on them, so it's a really good way to learn the, uh, I was going to say the toponymy of the forest, that's probably the wrong word, isn't it? But the names of the parts of the forest, which I always really struggle with, and it's lovely to find them here on the gateposts. So just up here off this path, I think is one of the finest views in the forest, if not the finest. And look at that, isn't it glorious? Looking out to the hills to the north of Waltham Abbey. 
I've stood on those hills and looked back here as well before, so I'll post the link to that below. But it's just majestic, isn't it? And down below here is Honey Lane Plain. Now, I first came down here about probably about three years ago because I saw a photograph of the stone drinking trough at the bottom here. And I realised I'd never been there, and nor did I really know where it was. So that is what we're going looking for today. I do remember though, it was very wet indeed down here, so... Yes, as I remember it, pretty muddy and boggy down here. You can feel the dampness in the air as well. I have slightly lost my bearings here. And I don't remember it being this far down to the road into the trough. It was a bit further than I expected, but I don't remember it being this far. But I'm going to just keep going, following my nose, which is often a really bad idea, actually. But let's wait and see where we end up, eh? It's funny, as I checked my phone, it turns out I was going the right way. <laughs> I'm going to go slightly adjacent and come round to the trough because it's the way the path is going. But otherwise, my, my instincts actually were not failing me for, for once. I don't know what's happening. It must have just been a fluke. I think the reason I didn't recognise it back there is because I came down here. This is the path that leads off just near the beginning of uh, Verdera's Ride. So if you were coming here, that's the most direct route to take. But I wanted to show you the view. And yeah, this is the path that leads down to the bottom to where I think is the stone drinking fountain that I'd seen in an old photograph of Epping Forest. And just at the bottom of, of Honey Lane Plain, you'll find the Woodbine Pub. And you know, I, I mean, I will stop there one day, not today. I'm going to try not to, to drink today. I know that might be shocking to you, but I caught up with some of my old, uh, my old City Poly pals yesterday, so I think I need a day's rest. What a, uh, yeah, I'm, anyone been there? Can you recommend it? I bet the ale is good. And here is the little thatched drinking fountain that, uh, that drew me down here those three or four years ago. There's a photograph of it in an old book I've got of Epping Forest Walks. I'll put the name of the book up here. It's a really delightful book. And I just thought, what's, where on earth is that? What a delightful thing, a thatched drinking fountain. Cattle drinking fountain, I should say. And here it is, sat beside the road still. I mean, there are options here. I could go up to Thaden Boys. I, well, I could go back up Honey Lane Plain, carry on along Verdera's Ride, and then drop down to Thaden Boys, which was what I was thinking of doing. But um, it's quite a muddy, gnarly route that way, and it's just started to rain. So I am tempted just to go back the way I came slightly, go, the, go up the path I should have taken down, really, but then go back via. Um, the King's Oak and, you know, down via uh, Loughton Camp, back to Loughton rather than Thaden Boys. I mean, I was going to ask you what you think, but obviously I will have already made the decision before, <laughs> before you watch this video. Sometimes it's nice just to follow your footsteps back, although already I'm not exactly following them. I'm going to go diff one different path, but I like doing that sometimes on Epping Forest walks, you know. Let's wait and see that. I might change my mind. I could still go up to Verdera's Ride and carry on to Thaden Boys. It's just a really kind of gnarly bit around the roundabout where the Miller and Carter is. And I'm not sure I'm in the mood for gnarliness on my forest walk. Maybe. Let's see where we go. There's a gentle rain falling now. It's quite a steep climb back up to uh, Verdera's Ride, but I'm just taking it gently and enjoying just the beauty of being out here. This is glorious, isn't it? I am heading back towards the King's Oak and I'll probably take the most direct route down to Loughton due to the rain, but this is delightful. Down across rushy plain in the wind and the rain. Loughton Camp is uh, just up ahead. And I was just thinking about, um, well, I am gonna say, it's remarkable how, <laughs> how quickly you get back. You know, it took me a good, what, two hours to walk down there, if not slightly more, two and a half hours to walk to the bottom of Honey Lane Plain. It's probably going to take me something like half an hour to walk back to Loughton. But then I was remembering, I said a very similar thing when I did my last video in Epping Forest. 
and then somewhere down here, I'm not sure if I came back via Lauten Camp actually, but on the way back, I just thought, you know what, I think I'm going to tack a little bit more on and go a slightly different way, where I haven't been before, and I got completely lost. <laughs> completely lost my bearings, I ended up walking back up the hill. It's very confusing with the gullies and the little streams. And yeah, I ended up way, way, way off, uh, off course and ended up having to walk down the hill in the pitch black. It was quite funny. So is that hubris? I'm going to be a bit more cautious this time. Oh, obviously nothing wrong with getting lost and ending up walking in the dark in the forest. It's a good bit of adventure. Oh, you see, I just nearly slipped over there. And that was <laughs> the forest is here to remind you to, uh, to keep your eyes open and concentrate on where you're walking. It's uh, four o'clock and it's nearly completely dark now, isn't it? Look at that. Well, I think we entered the forest at about 1 p.m. It's about 10 past one when we entered the forest. So it's about three hours to get back here. Not far now to, uh, to the edge of the forest. As I approach this bridge here, it reminds me I must find the location where they shot that brilliant scene. One of the funniest scenes in any movie ever in the Holy Grail, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, you know, with the, with the battle between the two knights. That's just the scratch. <laughs> That's wonderful. That was filmed along here, I, not, not near Loughton. I think it was near uh, Thaden Boys, wasn't it? People have told me in comments, so I have got the information somewhere. I've got to go there sometime and maybe take Joseph along my son to reenact that scene. It's the most gloriously funny thing ever, I think. Well, we're out of the forest now. I'm just going to walk down here to... Is it Forest Road? I never know the, <laughs> the name of the road. It, must be, it should be called Forest Road if it's not. This is the road that leads down to Loughton High Street and down to the station. So it's the perfect time for me to, for me to sign off. Look, with the Loughton Brook down there behind me. It's wonderful, isn't it? Thank you so much for joining me on that walk to Honey Lane Quarters and Honey Lane Plain. I've been meaning to get that in a video for about three years and so I've finally done it. Um, Thank you to my wonderful supporters on uh, Patreon and YouTube memberships are now available on the channel. Um, it does cost, there is a fee uh, for some extra content. If you're interested in that, take a look. Click the join button and it will show you what's on offer. Anyway, as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. I say that as I walk past my first Christmas lights. Look, <laughs> yeah, we're in that time of year now got to finish the quaggy though I'm so desperate to get down there and finish the quaggy that's now become my priority and maybe we'll get out of London at least once before the end of the year so many good stuff to come before the end of 2022 always exciting take care have a great week bye bye